this video I'd like to focus on filtering drop-down choices in a pick list within Salesforce. This video builds on the first video in terms of how to populate a pick list from essentially a lookup table or a custom object. So as we look at this right now, we see there's only the go and no go choices. The table or custom object that it's pulling from though, actually has three choices that come in. However, because this is a duplicate, we don't want that duplicate value to appear. So how is this accomplished? Well, we can do this through the flow. So let's take a look at our flow and see what changes have come about. In our flow, we've accounted for the filtration by using a loop. So if you recall from the prior video, we're getting initial data from the opportunity and using the record ID to know what object we've clicked. Assigning some variables to, sh to show in the debugger the ability to see that and then going back to a custom object using the values off the opportunity to say what should the choices for a pick list be. Well, to make sure we don't present duplicate choices, we implement a loop. So as we look at this loop, we can see it's looping over pick list values. That's what we called it. And where are those pick list values coming from? They're coming from the query right directly above it. So that's the collection variable we want to pull from. And you can see here, get pick list values. That is our query, and that's going after our object, and it's passing in what we ob obtained from the opportunity as the source, and we're returning all records and automatically storing all of that. So because we named it get pick list values, that is the collection object. So the loop is looping over the get pick list values collection. In terms of trying to remove duplicates, as we move through the loop, we want to test to see if we have a duplicate value. Now, one point I do want to make as we look back at this get records, you want to sort it doesn't matter the direction of the sort, but you do want to sort the returned records and sort them by the value you're looking to deduplicate. You don't want to have duplicates that could be in any order because it's the sort that helps with the loop step. So as we loop through the first record, and we find a value there, we do a test. So if a duplicate is found, we're basically saying a variable, which is this placeholder variable, equals what is being returned from the loop. So the current item from the loop and its pick list value are being checked here. Now the first time through, this is null. So it's not going to be an equal scenario. So there's no duplicate that's found the first time through. And when a duplicate is not found, we're just outputting that. But the next time through, again, the sort is very important. It will compare this value. Now, how does this value get populated? Well, let's take a look. So if there is no duplicate found, we're going to proceed to an assignment step. But if there is a duplicate found, we're just going to go back and get another iterator through the loop. 
but let's say that first iteration comes through the value is unique because the comparison does not equate we will then go to dupe not found duplicate not found let's take a look at our assignment step in the assignment step what is happening is a collection object has been created and we're going to add to that collection a value the value from the pick list that came from the loop we are then going to set the placeholder variable which is just a text variable equal to that same value this is how the next time through the loop we can now check to see if the placeholder value matches the next iteration and this continues until all rows in the query collection are evaluated it's very important that you create a collection variable here and this is visible over here as well so as we look at the decision it is passing through and checking for the text variable but as we look at the assignment we want to say okay what is our pick list value no dupes consisting of it's a record collection and that collection is going to retain the values being added to it as we move past the assignment we're just going to go back to the loop and we're going to continue this process until all the rows are evaluated once the rows are complete then we can move on to our screen and here is our pick list control or component what do we populate the pick list component with we want to choose a choice set and that choice set will allow us to have the deduped values in it to then show so there is the collection now pick list values no dupe that was populated in the prior steps so let's go back here into the assignment pick list value no dupes and here's where we populate it pick list value no dupes and then we want to use that for the choices of the drop down and that is effectively how we bring in those deduped choices for purposes of the drop down the pick list the Salesforce pick list and we set the label to be the value and the choice name or the choice value to be the name which is more or less the ID this is what the user sees this is what the database will store this is how you filter a pick list and it's a little tricky from the standpoint of making sure you've created the correct variable type so again we're looking for a collection variable to be created so we can assign it the unique value as it comes through the loop and then when you get to the screen component you want to create a collection set that is based on that collection that was populated that's really the trick to this so hopefully this was helpful thanks